there is not a person alive who has not gone through some difficult, challenging, emotionally draining experiences that if you had to do it all over again, you would do anything and everything just to avoid it. But I want to tell you something. You are not what you've been through. In this episode, I want to share with you this simple thought and give you some hope and peace about your past to let you know you are not what you've been through. Stay tuned. This is Bishop Littman Live. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Welcome back to Bishop Littman Live. I'm so excited to share this episode with you. If this is your first time with us, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as to the podcast. If you're regular family, well, I'm so excited to have you back with us for another episode. Hey, you know what? We've all gone through some tough times. In fact, right now is one of the most challenging hours of our lives as not just people, not just black people or white people, but all of humanity all around the world. This is a difficult time. And the funny thing about it is we don't know how long it's going to last. You know what? We've all gone through times, nothing like this before, but different experiences that have stretched us and pulled us and challenged us. And in many instances, beat us down and left us literally for dead. Maybe you're listening to me right now and you are going through a challenging hour, a challenging season, a challenging year in your life. Maybe you've gone through divorce. Maybe you've gone through the loss of a job. Maybe you have debt that is all the way mounted and uh, stacked up to the ceiling of your home. Maybe you're in a position where you're challenged in your faith and you're wondering, is God there? If God is there, does he still care? Has he forgotten me? Has he abandoned me? Why would God allow me to go through all of these things without answers, without a clear response, without answering my prayers, without moving the way that I would expect that he would? Is God still up there? Is God still God? And does God still care about me? And let me just tell you something. Don't feel bad about asking any of those questions or feeling any of those ways. You see, as human beings, we go through. But as divine human beings, God sees us and carries us through. And you may be saying, wait a minute, I don't want to hear that right now. That's not what I need right now. But can I tell you what you need? What you need to know is this. Nothing just happens. Let me say it again. Nothing just happens. There is no such thing as an accident as it relates to what happens within your life. Everything is divinely orchestrated. God planned it out from the very inception in your mother's womb. God knew what would lie ahead of you. He knew what would lie in your future. He knew what would come your way. He saw every sickness, he saw every disease, he saw every divorce, he saw every debacle, he saw every challenge, he saw every difficulty. And you may be saying, well, if God saw all of that, why didn't he do something about it? Can I help you with that? God saw it, but he saw you through it. Because you have to look back at your life and say, I've been through some tough times, horrific experiences and some epic losses and some major challenges and maybe even as we approach Mother's Day, maybe there's some difficulty within you emotionally because of your relationship with your mother or maybe your mother has gone on to be with the Lord. Why would God allow it to happen? Well, God saw you through it. He's seeing you through it and he's going to see you through it. And this thought for today is just very simple. You are not what you have been through. Isn't that awesome? We've all gone through some things, 
But none of us are defined by what we have gone through. In fact, we're not defined by what we've gone through. We are developed by what we have gone through. You see, when I went to college, and I've been several times, they have something called a curriculum. And the curriculum is the pattern and the pathway that leads ultimately to a specific diploma or degree. That's why they call it a degree program, because as you walk every step of the program, you end up ultimately with the degree and graduation. So when I went to grad school to become a counselor, when I graduated, I was a counselor. In other words, every class was preparing me for a role and I was becoming a counselor while I was in the program. When I graduated, I became, I was. Same thing for seminary, I was preparing to become a better preacher, better pastor, better administrator of a church, a better businessman, a, a, a person who would better hold on uh, today's church and what the needs are of a congregation. I was preparing while I was going through it to become what I am. Now watch this. When we go through the series of courses called Life, we are not going through the things that we're going through to become what we're going through like we do when we go to college. Uh-uh. When you go through divorce, you don't do that to become a divorcee. You didn't get married to divorce. When you go through debt stacked up to the rooftop, you, you're not going through that to become a debtor. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I think I'll file back bankruptcy today, or I think I'll lose my home today. I think I'll lose, lose my car today. No one sets that for the agenda for their life or their week. And so what I'm saying is very simple, is that what you go through does not determine who you become. There's a label that may be attached to you after going through certain changes in life. For instance, every job application, every bank application, every application out there will ask a question about your marital status. Single, married, widowed, divorced. But you didn't start your life out to be single. <laughs> married, widowed, or divorced. And now that is a label or a stigmatism because of what you have gone through. But God wants you to know, in 3 John 1 and 2, John says to his disciple Gaius, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And even though that was John talking to Gaius, his disciple, if we keep the text in context, it's in the word of God. God wants you to do well. God wants you to achieve. God wants you to aspire to go higher. And he wants you to know that even when men label you by what you've gone through, your label never changes with him. You see, People may call you single, married, widowed, divorced. People may, may call you fired. People may call you bankrupt. We don't know what life will hold in the next few weeks, months, or even years to come. But no matter the label that the world puts on you, remember this thought for today and let it be a thought for your life. You are not what? you have been through. So what, you've lost some things. So what, you may have had to move or downsize, downscale. You are not where you are and you're not where you've been through. You are still God's baby, his beloved child. 
And there is forgiveness for every mistake. There is peace with God for every misstep. You're not what you've been through. I don't care how many times you've messed up. We all have. I don't care how many times you have failed. We all have. I don't care how many times your life has been disrupted by just crazy moves, bad choices, bad mistakes. We've all made them. But you are not defined by your past. You are developed by your past. God still wants you to do well. God still wants you to be well. It doesn't matter if you have to move from a subdivision to an apartment on an undesired side of town. God still wants you to do well. And your life is not over because you lose something. You're not defined by a subdivision, by a house. You're not defined by the name brand of your car or your jeans. You're not defined by the multitude of your money. You're defined as beloved. You're defined as God's child. You're defined as the apple of God's eye. So no matter what you've been through, keep this in your mind. I'm not what I've been through. So as you look back on your life, as I prepare to close and pray with you, I want to encourage you to see the hand of God at work in every area of your life. There's never been a time in your life where God left you, God let you down, God failed you. Your expectations can sometimes be out of whack because what we're not taught in the church is that there will be times of suffering. We talk so much about favor, 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 favor. But can I keep it real with you as I always do? There will be times of frustration, times of loss, times of setback, times of economic plummeting. But through it all, if you fall from here all the way down to here, know God's hand is right there to catch you when you fall. Because you're not defined by what you've been through, by what you lose, by what you walk away from, by what you have. You are defined by the grace of God. Can I pray with you? Father, thank you so much for my friend who is watching, who is listening. I pray, oh God, that you would touch our hearts and our minds to know who we are and whose we are, to know that we are God's beloved, to know that you want the best for your children and you provide and you take care. And God, we thank you that even though life may be like a roller coaster right now and we're down in the low part of that roller coaster, Father, no matter how low it goes, no matter how scary it is, we still have our hands lifted to you because we know the only way left is up. And so God, in these difficult times, we trust you. In these challenging times, we trust you. In these crazy times, we trust you. In these uncertain times, we trust you. In these economically challenging times, we trust you. We surrender it all to you. Thank you for taking us through, but not letting us still be defined by what we've gone through. Thank you for changing our label from burdened to blessed, from poor to powerful, from without to with it all. Because when we have you, you're all that we need and every blessing comes from you. So we ask for patience, we ask for grace. And I pray for my friends all over the world that you would touch right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, I'm so excited about sharing these moments with you. This is a great joy in my life. And if you'd like to study with me, I'd love to invite you to join my e-class. Simply send me an email at clearstudies at gmail.com. For those of you who are listening on the podcast, again, it's clearstudies at bishop. I'm sorry, clearstudies at gmail.com. Clearstudies at gmail.com. And I'd love to share our free study guides with you. And you can be a part of my e-class and study a little deeper. And I'll share with you my findings in the scripture and years of study. And I look forward to doing that. Also, if you have a prayer request and you'd like to get some more support in prayer and have others praying for you, I'd love to share your confidential prayer request. It will stay between you, me, and the Lord. I promise you that. If you'd like to do that, simply send your prayer request to prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Again, prayerwithbishop at gmail.com and it will stay between us. Also, let me encourage you very quickly to go and visit my website at bishoplitman.org. bishoplitman.org. You can find there insightful Christian blogs, podcasts, You can find links to my books as well as YouTube channels and all sorts of free materials that will bless you and encourage your walk in the Lord. Well, it's been my joy to share this episode with you. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to sharing with you in the next episode. Until then, stay in peace because that's what God wants to give to you because you are not what you have been through.